Today I'm going to show you how to play Connect Four perfectly on a 7x6 board in a variety of different situations. It turns out that Connect Four on a 7x6 board is completely solved. If you're the first player to go, then you should win every single time with perfect play. Obviously it's extremely difficult to play perfectly in every situation because there's so many different ways that the game could go, but I'm going to show you a lot of common situations and what red can do to successfully navigate them. And I'm going to, going to explain how the situations work, so hopefully you can carry the logic to other situations as well. First, if you're the first player, you want to start off in the middle column, and then usually I see yellow go on top or next to you. I see yellow make one of those two moves probably 95% of the time. So those are what I'll cover in this video. First, if yellow goes on top of you, then red wants to continue building up this column. And now yellow has four different options. They can go on top of you or they can play in one of the three other columns. There's actually six other columns, but three of them are effectively the same as the other three. If yellow goes on top of you, then red wants to play in one of the adjacent columns. And now again, yellow has a choice where they can either play here or here. And they have to make one of those two moves to prevent red from forking them on their next turn. But this is what yellow does most of the time. When yellow does this, then red wants to play here and then start building up this column. And red has a couple different ways that they can win in this situation. But if yellow goes here, then red can kind of uh, take control of the left side by making a move like this. The reason why this is a powerful move is because yellow can't move here. If yellow moves here, then red would win immediately. So this cell essentially belongs to red already. So if yellow were to make a move like this, for instance, then and red went here, now they have the makings of a fork right here, where if they were just to get this cell, this cell would basically be a win for red because now they have a fork where if they just get either of these two cells, they win and yellow can't t get both of them. And because this fork is on the third row or an odd numbered row, this is actually great for red. I actually made a video earlier this year that talks about the odd and even strategy for this game. But basically if you're the first player or red in this case, you want to try and get a threat to win on an odd numbered row like red does here. One way that yellow could mess with this a little bit is if instead of going here, if they went here, then that forces red to go here and then yellow has to go here. And now even though red wants to go here to create the fork, they can't do it. They, they actually have to move in one of these two cells. Otherwise, yellow can move here and they fork you. So red moves here to prevent that, and then yellow can prevent the fork here. And then red can take that, and then yellow would take this to prevent red from getting a threat to win on this odd numbered row here. But this is still okay for red because they can start playing up this column. And now yellow wants to move here to prevent red from getting this cell and getting a threat to win on the third row. But red can still get a threat to win on the third row by moving here. So it's a situation that works out for red regardless of what yellow tries. Now going back to this situation, if yellow moved here instead, kind of preventing this fork from even being a consideration, red can still take control of this game by moving up this column again. And yellow is going to keep going on top of red to prevent red from getting a threat to win on an odd number grow. But now at this point, red actually has two ways that they can set themselves set themselves up to win. If they go here, they get a threat to win on the fifth row. And if they go here, they get a threat to win on the fifth row. So even if yellow tries to stop them, red will go there and they'll have the advantage. The last case that I'll show is if yellow goes here, 
forcing red to go here and then they go here. Now this might look like yellow is preventing the win on both sides, but actually red has a way around this as well. If they go here and then here, now this is a winning situation for red because red can essentially move up this column. So red gets this, yellow gets this, and red gets this. Now they have a threat to win on the fifth row again. They could also win just with these two columns. If the rest of the board filled up and we were just left with these two columns, eventually yellow would have to move here, giving the cell to red, and then red could build up this column for the win. So those are all the different ways it could play out if yellow played on the left side like this. But if yellow instead played on the right side like this, then I think it's even easier for red to win because they can build up this column. And now yellow has to move here to prevent red from forking them. Because um, if, they, if they didn't play here, then red could move here for the win. So yellow moves there, and then red can still win by moving up the right-hand side, like I showed in an earlier example, where yellow can't prevent them from creating a threat to win on the fifth row. Now, going back to this situation, everything I showed you before was if yellow played on top of you, but yellow has three other options as well. If they play in the next column over, then red wants to build up this column and usually yellow is going to do this. If they do that, then red can go here. And this forces yellow to move here to prevent you from forking them. And then red can build up this column. And this is a slightly more complicated example than what I showed before. But basically this is gonna be a win for red because they're going to get this diagonal here. And yellow can't really prevent it. The reason why red is going to get this diagonal is because there's a cell in the third row and a cell in the fifth row, which are good for red. Now, in the video I made earlier this year, I mentioned that normally two cells on odd numbered rows kind of cancel each other out, meaning that red normally couldn't guarantee that they get both of these. But this situation is a little bit different because red has a way to win on the second row here. So they're effectively locking up this column. So it's as if they just have one cell that they're really looking for on the third row. And eventually yellow will have to give this cell to red. And then red can move here and give up this and then build up this column. And then they'll have another threat to win here on the fifth row, which they will get. It's important that red gets this cell before they give up this column though. Another thing that yellow can do to make this much more difficult for red is if instead of going here, if yellow went here, this makes it a lot more difficult for red and this is a pretty good move for yellow. But if red goes here and let's say yellow goes here, a good move for red would be going up here and kind of getting control of the top like this. I'm just going to show you one way that this can play out for red, but there are a variety of different ways it can work. But let's just say yellow and red build up this column. Now this is a case where yellow doesn't want to move here because if red gets this cell, then they would have three out of four on this row and they would win if they got this cell. Meaning yellow isn't going to let them get this you know, if red had this cell, yellow wouldn't let them get this cell. So red would get this one instead, which would give them a threat on the third row. So basically yellow doesn't want to let red get this cell because it forces them to allow a threat to win on the third row over here. So yellow is going to let red get this cell, which is also good for red. The reason it works for red is because if red and yellow build up this column and red takes this cell, this forces yellow to move here and break up their threat that they had set up. 
And now yellow will move here to prevent red from getting all these threats to win here. But then red can just fork yellow for the win. And yellow can't block both of these. So that's kind of a complicated example. That one's probably the most complicated one I've shown so far. Really, it's just an example of how you kind of have to look ahead multiple, multiple moves and see how different things interact with each other. If yellow moves here instead of in the adjacent column, then again, red is going to want to play up this column with yellow. And then red can make a move here, which will force yellow to move on the bottom row to prevent red from forking them. And then red can play up this column. And yellow wants to move here because if red gets this cell, then this is a case I showed before where if they have all four of these cells, then they basically are setting up a fork for themselves where they just need this cell and then they basically win. And it's on the third row, which is good for red. So yellow ideally wants to move here, but it doesn't really matter because red is just going to go here, which is also a win for red. And this is also, um, this is similar to the example I showed before where red has two cells on odd numbered rows that they need for the win. And normally two odd road threats would cancel each other out, but in this case, red has three out of four here where they need this cell on the fourth row to win. So they're kind of locking up this column. And eventually yellow will have to give away this cell to red, and then they will have a fork set up on this column. The important thing to note is that this cell is on an even numbered row, so it doesn't mess with the parity and cancel out this one like this one would. So red can get this cell and then build up this column for the win. Now another case or another way that yellow can play this is if instead of playing on top here, they go here. This is a case where red now wants to play up this column. And then red can take control of the game by going here. And the reason why this is good for red is because they have two cells that they need for four in a row on the fifth row. And yellow can't undercut them because red has this cell here. That's important and definitely a benefit of having adjacent cells like this. But the reason red is going to win this situation is because they have three threats to win on odd numbered rows. And even though two of these would cancel each other out where red can't guarantee they get both of them, when there's a third one involved, that means that yellow is going to have to give up one of these to red first. So like, let's say yellow moves here and red gets this cell. Now they have a, a threat to win on the fifth row. If yellow goes here and red moves here, then again, they have a threat to win on the fifth row on both sides and they just have to pick which one they want to go for. But Regardless of what happens, it will reach a point where yellow has to give up one of these three cells to red, and then they have a threat to win. Now I just want to point out that if, if red didn't play on top of yellow here and build up this column like this, if instead they just went straight to this thinking that they were going to win on the fifth row, it actually doesn't work because when yellow gets this cell, they're just giving themselves a lot of power in this section of the board. The reason this actually swings the game into yellow's favor is because they have threats to win on the on the second row, which is good for yellow. If yellow were to get this cell, for instance, then they would have a threat to win on this cell and this cell, and they'd basically be locking up this column where it doesn't really matter what's happening up here because yellow is just going to win here. If red gave up this cell to yellow, it's kind of a similar thing where they're locking up this column, which will prevent red from winning. But red can't really stop yellow from getting either of these two cells, because if red goes here, then yellow gets this. If yellow goes here and red goes here, it doesn't matter because yellow's going to have three out of four on this row. So red has to let yellow get this cell so that red can block this. 
So this already is enough working for yellow that they can mess up red. Now going back to this for one more case, if yellow plays at the far right like this, then red has a couple options. They can move either here or here to maintain their advantage. I'm just going to show the case where they go here. And then if yellow plays on the left, then red wants to build up this column. And then they can go over here and build up this column. This is a little bit different because red has to move here to prevent yellow from winning right away. But it's still an advantageous situation for, for red. Notice that if red got this cell, then they would have this situation that I showed a couple times already where they have two out of four and they just need these odd road cells for the win. And they have this that's also kind of locking up this column. So they're going to get this cell and then this cell. So yellow might want to stop that by moving here. But then red can win on the right side by making a series of forcing moves like this. Just as one example. And then that's the win for red. If we went back to this situation, and if instead of yellow going here, if yellow went here, then red can build up this column. Yellow has to move here to prevent red from forking them on this side by going here. So yellow goes there, and then red can build up this column now. Yellow wants to move here to block the fifth row but red can still win it for themselves by playing here and then building up this column. Yellow is going to keep going on top of them to block the odd road threats, but they can't block all of them because red's going to go there. So those are all the cases I'm going to share for this situation where yellow goes on top of red. But now I'm going to just quickly show a few examples where yellow goes on the adjacent column like this. I think this is actually a better move for yellow because it's it's harder for red to play perfectly against it, in my opinion. But usually how this opening goes is red plays here, yellow plays there, and then red can play here. This is a common way that it goes. Everything that red has done so far is, is still optimal. And at this point, I've seen yellow do a variety of different things. I'm going to show four different cases to end this video. This is actually a pretty good move for yellow, even though it seems like a weird move. But red can respond to this by going here and then building up this column. Yellow is going to want to move here at this point, because if they don't, red can move here. And now it's just like those situations I showed before where red would have two cells on odd numbered rows that they need and they'd be locking up this column if they moved here. So yellow has to move there to prevent that. And now red actually has to go here. This is actually a, a strong formation for yellow if they were to get this cell. I'll explain that more in a little bit, but just take me for my word at the moment. And then at this point, yellow will go here to prevent you from getting, from locking up the this column like I showed before. And red can go on top. And this is the farthest I'm going to go with this opening, but this is definitely an advantage, an advantageous spot for red. They just have so many ways that they can make four in a row. There's so many possibilities working here, and there aren't a lot of great moves for yellow, or not a lot of potential for yellow. If yellow goes here, then red would go here and have a threat to win on the third row. If yellow went here, for instance, red could go here, and now they have all these red cells kind of like dominating the top left. This is definitely a good spot for red. If yellow were to try going here instead, then red could still snatch up this spot here, but then they want to play up this column like this. And this is actually a fork set up for red as well. It's a little bit different and kind of hard to see, but if red were to get this cell, then they would have a fork where they would win with either of these two cells. So this is like a win for red, and it's on the third row, which is good for them. And 
they will eventually get it. And now if yellow goes here, then red can go here and then here. And you might look at this and say that this is bad for red because yellow has a threat to win on an odd row, which would cancel out if red got a threat on an odd row somewhere else. But it actually turns out that red will be able to share this threat with yellow and eventually get the win with it. Because if they go here, then yellow would want to go here to block red from, from getting three out of four on this row. But then red can just go here. And this is another example of the situation I've shown several times already, where red wants these two cells both on the third row. And they're effectively locking up this column with this threat to win here. So eventually yellow will have to move here and give this cell to red. And then red can go here and, and they've forked yellow. The last case I'm going to show is if yellow goes on top of your red cell here. If they do that, then you want to go here. And if yellow goes here, then this becomes an easy win for red because red can go here. And now red has two different ways of winning. Either they can get this cell or this cell. If yellow takes this one, then red can take this one. If yellow took this one, then red could take this one. But in this example, red is going to win because they need the third and the fifth row cells of this diagonal. And they're going to be able to get both because they're locking up this column with this threat on the second row. So eventually yellow will have to give away this cell to red and then they have a fork. One thing I will quickly point out is that red has to go on this side in order for it to work. If they go here instead, it doesn't work out for, for red because yellow can go here, taking that diagonal, so red goes here instead. And if yellow takes this cell, now the threat is removed for red, and red can no longer win this. Because having these two cells is a powerful setup for yellow, where in order for red to get this cell, yellow is going to have to kind of undercut them. Where you can't get four in a row in this diagonal because yellow is going to get four in a row in this diagonal first. If red had this cell, then yellow wouldn't be able to undercut you like this because you would be essentially undercutting them. It's the fact that yellow has both of these cells that prevents you from getting this for the win. And just to show you what it looks like at the end game, if all the other columns filled up, this is at a point where it's red's turn. If they go here and red, yellow goes there, now red has to move here because if they don't, if yellow gets this, then they're essentially undercutting the diagonal that you've been going for. And they'll have a threat to win on the second row where yellow will actually win this game. So. Red has to go here, and then yellow goes here, eliminating your way of winning. And now this is actually going to be a draw, because red only has threats to win on even rows, and yellow only has threats to win on odd rows, which are good for neither player. So this is all because yellow has this set up here that's kind of undercutting you. You don't want to let yellow get this situation here. Now, if yellow makes a tougher move, they might choose to go here instead of here. If they go here, then red isn't able to win in the same way, but they can build up this column. And now they have a pretty strong setup here as well, where they have a lot of control over the middle. They have a lot of potential ways that they can make four in a row. Yellow just doesn't have as much going on here. The one warning I will give about this position is that red does not want to move here. This is a mistake for red. If red moves here, then yellow can go here and then here. And now yellow has two ways that they can create a threat to win. If they go here, then they'll have a threat on the fourth row. If they move here, then they'll have a threat here on the second row. In either way, they'll be locking up a column and red won't be able to get the win anywhere else. Like that. So those are a variety of situations you might find yourself in playing Connect 4.
four. Like I said, you can't memorize every single possibility, but hopefully the logic makes sense and you understand why the openings work the way they do. The best thing you can do to get better at this game is just keep playing, and anytime you lose or draw as red, figure out why you didn't win and learn from your mistakes. And also, if you don't win as red, figure out what did yellow do to cause you to mess up. And then when you're playing as yellow against someone else, you can try the same thing. So that's kind of how I got better by just playing and learning from mistakes and trying different things against, against different players until I figured out what works. Another thing I'll just quickly point out is that all of the rules that I mentioned as far as parity goes, like odd and even, it only works this way because there's an even number of rows. If you were playing Connect 4 on a different board, like a 9x9 board for instance, then the parity rules would be a little bit different from what I mentioned here. I will also say that there are solver tools out there where you can figure out how to play correctly and kind of figure out what mistakes you made if you're reviewing a game. I will just say don't use it while you're playing because that's obviously cheating, but it can be useful to figure out what you did wrong in a certain game. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please interact with the video somehow. And that will let me know to make more videos like this. So make sure to stay tuned. Thanks for watching.